the chances of success are actually greater if you check American records first. Check the records that were created by and about your ancestor. And uh, see if you can find the name of the town there. And then that's the appropriate time to make the leap and start doing foreign research. Here's a list of the kinds of records in which you might find either the name of the town or clues to, uh, that, that will help you find the name of the town. And this is a pretty comprehensive list. I wish I could say, go to X type of record and that's where you'll find the name of the town. But I'm afraid it really isn't that simple. Uh, you might find the name of the town in any of these records. Some of them I think that are especially though likely to have the name of the town. I turn this around in the right way. Church records, especially ethnic churches where the parishioners were mostly Italian or Polish or German. Church records, the burial records, and the marriage records will often list the name of the town where someone was from. Another good one is obituaries. Uh, obituaries, uh, sometimes they were in foreign language newspapers, sometimes in you know, English language newspapers. They're another good source. Uh, probate records, you might not think of probate records as a likely source to find the name of the town, but if your immigrant ancestor left a will or there was uh, an estate proceeding of some kind, uh, uh, relatives of the decedent in the uh, country of origin might have been named in the proceeding. They might have been served with uh, papers because they were potential heirs. So probate records are a good place. Vital records, of course. Uh, again, you won't necessarily find the name of the town there, but uh, you might be lucky. And lastly, family papers. If your family or anyone in your family has letters that might have been sent to your immigrant ancestor, or passports, or uh, diaries, anything of that sort, you would be well advised to look at them because they might contain the name of the town or at least uh, a clue. There's a question here. I, 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 military, you have military records. I just wanted to mention if you have a relative uh, ancestor who served in the Civil War, and you can get their pension record, it's right. almost always going to be in there. Yeah, the, the comment was that uh, you know if an ancestor served in the Civil War, then you can get their military and pension records and uh, their information including the town of birth, might be in there, and that's a good point. So all of these types of records um, are important to look at if you're trying to identify the town of origin. Uh, and you won't find one of these records for every ancestor, so you'll, but you'll have to look and see which are available. Um, what we're going to do here to illustrate how you would go about this, or a typical way to go about it, is to use a case study I'm going to show you my uh, experience. Oh, I should never, before I get into that. Uh, if you strike out with American records, if you really have no luck uh, in any of these uh, types of American records, certain kinds of foreign records that might help you. Uh, many foreign countries conducted censuses, and a lot of those are now online. And if they're searchable, uh, you might be able to find your ancestor in that. Uh, emigration records can be very useful. Um, some regions kept emigration records for a particular period of time. Uh, there's an Alsatian emigration index, a Württemberg uh, emigration index, for instance. Um, you might, be, have, might have access to taxation records in a foreign country. Um, don't overlook telephone books, and I mean current telephone books. Uh, if your surname is unusual, um, you might want to check uh, telephone books and see if there are still people with that surname living in the country, and uh, that might be the time that your ancestor came from. And if the if the vital records of the foreign country are available, particularly online, and particularly if there's a national index, which uh, we're seeing now in some countries, um, they also can be very helpful. The case study that we're going to look at uh, it involves my great-great-grandfather, Jacob Graf. Uh, when I started this, uh, about all I knew was that he came from Germany and that he settled initially in Niagara County 
and then uh, later moved to Erie County, New York. Okay, I said that to find the name of a town of origin, you first want to interview relatives. Well, I didn't have much luck there. Uh, I talked to my father and my uncle and a couple of elderly aunts, and uh, none of them knew or remembered much about the, uh, uh, the grass. Uh, my uncle, who loved to tell family stories, uh, did say that as a child he'd been told that the grafts had lived in Germany near the Swiss border. Well, it helps a little bit, you know. It's an indication I should look in southern Germany rather than northern that uh, my great-great-grandfather came to the United States to avoid military service. Well, that didn't help me a great deal in, in uh, finding his town of origin. So I started searching for the American records. Uh, first, okay, this is uh, the list I showed you earlier, and the ones outlined in red are the ones I found for Jacob Graff. So this is an illustration that you're not going to find every type of record for every immigrant ancestor. Field Cemetery in the town of Wheatfield in Niagara County. Uh, this is his tombstone. Um, really didn't help me a lot except giving me the, um, his birth and death dates and also the same dates for his wife. But, you know, every little bit of information is important and you start to assemble it and collect it and put it together. So, um, I didn't mention uh, published county histories and local histories, but they can also be an important source for you. Uh, a lot of counties in the United States published histories in the 1870s and 1880s. That was a very popular time for county histories. And uh, so I checked the county history for the city of Buffalo in Erie County, which was published in 1884. And there was a biographical sketch of Jacob Graff. 